Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm gonna continue doing Magic Leap videos. We're gonna be focusing on creating a project where we're gonna be using dependency injection. The reason why I wanted to do this is because I want to show you different patterns. We know that we can use singleton patterns, we can use dependency injection. There's also a factory pattern. So I'm gonna start by working on dependency injection and show you how to set that up so that you can utilize it whenever you need it. So to do that, let's jump into Unity and start working in our project. All right guys, so let me show you what we're gonna be doing today. So let's start by creating a new project. This project is gonna be called Magic Leap DI and DI is for dependency injection. Then let's go ahead and select the latest version and I'm gonna leave basically the same location that I have for the previous examples. And then this is gonna be a 3D project. So just click on create project. And this is gonna take a minute to create. So what we're gonna be doing today is like I mentioned in the introduction, is that I'm gonna be showing you how to set up Sendjack, which is a dependency injection container. And it allows, it allows for easily decouple your instances and basically your game logic. So what I'm gonna be doing today is we're gonna be creating a very basic UI, and then we're gonna be injecting a couple of things. We're gonna be injecting a diagnostics a script, and we're also gonna be injecting a UI manager. So it's actually gonna be the diagnostics manager and the UI manager. And with this, we're gonna be able to manipulate what we're sending to the UI. So by the end of this session, you should have enough information to be able to use Senject. So let's go ahead and start, get started. Looks at the project I created right on time after I give you an overview. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Unity packages in the Magic Leap Package Manager. And we're going to basically download it. I already downloaded version 0.20.0. I'm just gonna select it, click on Open Folder, and then what I'll do is just double click it to bring it over. And it looks like Okay, it looks like it decompressed successfully. Now let's click on import to import it. And it's writing package items, importing the assets. So just the normal process of importing the Unity package. It looks like it's now downloading all the different examples. So one question that I always get from people is why would you use dependency injection? Why would you use a singleton? Why would you use a specific pattern? And, and honestly, this is just a tool. I'm not telling you that you should be using dependency injection. I'm not telling you that you should be using a single tone. What I'm telling you is that this is a tool that is available. And, you know, it's just like having a hammer and having multiple set of tools. If you find that this tool will work best for your team, then I would recommend that you guys use it and adopt it. And it all comes down to standardization and optimization. So. If you have something that is managing your instances and you're basically writing better code, then I would recommend using dependency injection. If you're used to doing different patterns, then I would say, you know, go with those patterns, but know how this pattern works before you evaluate the next pattern. All right, so now that I have that imported, let's go ahead and go into Window and then Package Manager. And we're gonna download the XR Legacy Input Helpers. Just gonna click on Install. And we can just ignore that error for now because we're gonna fix it in just a minute. Okay, it looks at like that got installed successfully. Now let's go ahead and go into File, Build Settings. And it's kind of funny that I remember every single step and I think it's because I've been doing this for way too many times. So now go to Build Settings and then we're gonna look at the player and then click on the Virtual Reality Support. It. We're gonna be bringing in, basically it's the core Magic Leap package and looks at that, import it, and we're gonna leave everything else the same. I don't think we need to change anything. The only thing, the only thing that I'm gonna change here is just change the version to, I always, start, I always like starting from 1.000, and you can use your own company, of course, and your own product name. I'm just gonna leave those as default for now. So now that we have that, let me make sure that we get, you know, we fix, we fix that error. And I'm going to just check a couple of things. Sometimes that error doesn't go away and what we need to do to make it work, let's go ahead and go back to file. And what that is saying is basically you couldn't find the namespace ML spatial mapper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the build settings 
as well on the player to loom in. And sometimes that fixes it. If it doesn't fix it, we'll do, there's another trick to make it work. Okay, looks like that's switching. It looks like it switched successfully. And I'm going to just hit play. Looks like that error is still happening. So let's go, get, let's go back to build settings and go to player settings. And looks at the virtual reality supported for some reason, got disabled. So I'm gonna enable it one more time. We should see a pop up here coming up in a minute and importing and I think it's gonna get fixed this time. Sometimes it happens when I do the steps in the run order and I know Magic Leaps is working on fixing some of these problems. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go and that step works. So I'm just gonna close out of project settings and let me go back. Looks like I need to go back to default and prior settings is, is gone. Okay, excellent. So now what I wanna do is I wanna focus on the configuration for this project. We're gonna go into the asset store and this is what we're gonna be using for dependency injection. We're gonna be looking and searching for Senjek and basically downloading the free one, which is which is free. The Modus 3 Media is the creator. And I wanna thank him for creating this amazing tool. And let's just click on import. Awesome, so now you should have all the different plugins one thing that I don't want to import is the, the extras. The extras have a lot of examples and things that we're not gonna need or we're gonna cover, we're not gonna cover in this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disable, I just want to import the core source functionality. Let's go ahead and click on import. So it's importing now. So the initial video is gonna be a lot of configuration and setup and then you know towards the end of the video we'll start working on some code. All right, so look, looks like that it's completed. And let me make sure that everything, okay, so everything it's, I'm gonna hit play just to make sure that everything work. Okay, so it looks like everything works successfully. And we're getting a warning. We can just ignore that warning, it's fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be bringing in some basically structures for the hierarchy that Magic Leap always provides and, and I really like what they do. And I do this on every video. so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in, we can choose either one of these. They all have a similar setup. So I'm gonna be bringing in the content and rendering. And let's go back into our scene. So I'm gonna go to scene, sample scene, and I'm gonna delete these two game objects, basically the camera. All right, so now rendering, we can leave those three. And then we don't need the map, the mapping, the spatial mapper or the controller, I don't need the example as well, the meshing example. So I just wanna make sure that you have the setup for the example that we're gonna do so that you can actually run it in your Magic Leap device. So I always use the head pose canvas and also the, of course, the, the Magic Leap camera. They, they provide a prefab for, for developers. So if you don't wanna use what they provide in the scenes, you can always you know, leave your directional light and then your main camera, you're gonna delete the default one and just bring in the one that Magic Leap provides, which you can find by just searching for main. All right, so now that we're good to go here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another component. So I'm just gonna duplicate the content. And this one is, I'm gonna call configuration. And this is where we're gonna be adding the Zenjek basically functionality and configuration. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new empty. And this one, I'm gonna call it the installer. Then we're gonna duplicate that guy and we're gonna call this one game manager. So on the installer, this is very common when you're setting up Senjek, you need to have a mono installer. And that's the way that I learned it. There might be another other ways. So what I'm gonna do on the installer is I'm gonna search for mono installer. And let's go ahead and select it. And it's gonna create a mono installer for us. The other thing that I'm gonna need is, let's search for scene context. So we're gonna need these two things, the mono installer, which is gonna be on the top, and also the scene context. Let's double click on the mono installer, just to make sure. And let me just bring this window down. All right, excellent. So this is the installer that they provide by default. What I'm gonna do instead of using the one that they provide, we actually need to do something a little bit different. Let's go back into Unity. And let's go ahead and create a new folder and under assets. We're gonna call this folder scripts. And in here, I'm just gonna create a new one, a new script, and we're gonna call it 
setup installer. Perfect. And we can now go in and double click on the setup installer. And it's going to open the basically the default configuration of a mono behavior. So you have your start and your update. So I'm going to delete everything in there. And what we're going to do, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we need to inherit from mono installer. That's why I didn't want to use the, you know, the core one, because we want to implement our own bindings. And this will make more sense as I'm, as I'm doing this. So this is going to be the mono installer. And of course, it's going to complain because we need to be bringing in Zenjack. Awesome. So now we need to overwrite a method, and that method is going to be the install binding. So we're going to say public overwrite, then void, and then this is going to be install bindings. Excellent. And let me just make sure everything here is formatted correctly. Excellent. So what is this install binding doing? So install binding, it's basically where we're going to be using what's called a container. And all a container is, is basically a dictionary of instances. It controls, you know, what instances are created, when they're created, how they are created and configured. So we're going to keep it very simple. But the syntax of creating a container is normally uh, normally this. And let me, let me rephrase that. We're not creating a container. We're binding instances to the container. So this is going to be container bind. And then basically, this is going to be your T. T is going to be the class that we're going to be injecting. And then that class needs to needs to have an instance. So that's what we're doing. The parentheses, and we're going to say what type of instance we need. We want a singleton. And there's a lot of different options in here. You can say as a singleton. So if we go back and delete this, and we look at, let's say, let's just do object for, for now, for, for example. And we can do different options. There's a transient. So this is basically going to create one every single time. There's also one as cache. There's also one as a singleton. So these are basically different behaviors on, on what you need to create an instance for. So if you need to create an instance every time you spawn maybe a ball or you're doing something in your game, maybe a bullet, that makes sense to do, you know, to do a tra transient and then delete that instance after you know a certain time or whatever your game logic might be. And then a singleton, we're very familiar with singletons, in fact. If we go to the Magic Leap core, they actually use singletons in their core implementation. So you, you, you're you probably familiar with that because you use it in some cases. If you're not familiar with this, it's OK. And if you haven't really used dependency injection, all this is all this is doing is basically, like I said, a dictionary of instances. So you don't have to do something like, you know, you're creating your object, and the object is basically object, new object. You don't need to do that anymore because this is going to manage that for you. So the way that we're going to work with this is we're going to be creating other instances. So I'm going to leave these for reference. And let's go back into let's go back into Unity and do some more configuration before we start doing coding. So now in the installer, there are a couple of things that I need to do. I'm not going to use the mono installer that they provide. I'm going to remove that. I am going to use the scene context because that's basically how they hook to the configuration. But I'm going to add a new component. And this component is going to be the setup installer that we created. Then what I'm going to do, that's actually we inherit from mono installer. So we're going to associate that with this component. So I'm just going to click on the plus symbol, then on this dot. And it's going to open, basically, it's going to look for the installers. I'm going to say the installer is in this game object. So double click it. So now that we have that associated, we should be good to go as far as like what it's basically calling the configuration. That's all we need to do for, for Senjek. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and, and do a couple of things to, to scripts. So we need to create a new script. And, and this is just an example only. You're more than welcome to you know try different things. This is the example that I have ready for you to be able to write to the UI. And then once we write to the UI, the way that we're going to write to the UI is by injecting instances, and those instances are going to be, you know, created by the installer that we just created. So the first one that I'm going to be doing is the Diagnostics Manager. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so we're going to be creating all of our objects in here. The other one that we're going to be doing is the UI Manager. So I'm just going to duplicate that object, and yeah, it's going to complain because it already exists. So it's going to rename it to UI Manager. And I think that should be all for now. We also have a game manager 
that I haven't created yet, but we need to create a script for that. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's actually do it here as well. So we're gonna do a new script, and this one's gonna be called the game manager. Excellent. So the game manager is gonna be a little bit different because I don't want to be injecting the game manager itself. We wanna let Unity create an instance of it, but then we're gonna be injecting dependencies through dependency injection. So now that we have the game manager uh, game object selected, click on add component. Let's search for game manager. And it's probably gonna complain because I didn't rename the classes themselves. So let's go ahead and click on open C sharp project. Excellent. And let's make sure that everything has the right the proper name. Looks like that has the right name. Let's see, game manager looks fine. Setup installer looks fine. And looks like this one didn't get renamed correctly. So we're just gonna call it what what is called, which is the UI manager. And there we go. So that should work there. So now what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be basically configuring some of these. So what I'm gonna do is let's go let's go back to the setup manager. And this is what we need to tell Senjek what we're gonna be creating an instance of. And Senjek is gonna handle that for us. So instead of deleting this, let's go ahead and create a new line. So I show you that we could do this and T was gonna be the instance. So the two instances that we're gonna need are gonna be Diagnostics Manager. And we do wanna create a singleton of that. And I also want to create a UI manager. So by default, Senjek is doing a lazy load, meaning that this is only gonna get an instance of Diagnostic Manager when we need it. And there's other ways that you can, you can handle these. You can say, okay, I don't want this to be lazy, so you can say no lazy. And that's actually gonna create, it's gonna be created on startup instead of actually getting created when it's used. So that depends on when you need it and you know, yeah, how quickly you need it or for what purpose do you need it. So I'm gonna do these ones on singletons. We, we want them right away. So I'm just gonna leave it as, as that. So that's really everything that we need to do here. So again, what we're saying in here, we're saying, okay, Sanjek, go ahead and register a new instance of Diagnostic Manager. And I want a single instance of that object in memory. And I'm, I'm telling it to do the same thing with the UI Manager. So that's basically everything that we need to do in the setup installer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. So now there's a couple more things that we need to do in order to make this work. And one that I that I want to do is I want to show you how to do injection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and go ahead and move into the game manager. And anytime that you hear injection, the idea is basically that you're telling a method or a, or a constructor that you want to inject dependency. So Anytime you have, for instance, let me show you, let me do an example here, because this is what we're gonna need. So for instance, if we wanted to say, okay, you know, when this method, when, when this method gets executed, and actually it's gonna get executed if we put an attribute on it, and I'll show you why. So if I say setup, for instance, and I say, okay, on this method, I want a diagnostic manager. I'm gonna say diagnostics manager and then do comma, and I also want to get another dependency, which is gonna be the UI manager. Excellent. So now, so now what we do, and the reason why I'm doing this syntax is because I'm using basically that lining is because I'm, I'm used to doing that. Let's go ahead and put that in one line. I think that makes more sense. So, so right now, you would need to create an instance of game manager and then call this method and say, okay, you know, if your variable is called game manager with lowercase g, you will, need to, you will need to say game manager that setup and then pass in those as your dependencies and of course do the word new. So what Sanjay does for us is we don't need to do that. What we, we need to do is we need to add a new attribute which is called inject. Excellent. And then now it's gonna complain because we need to bring in Sanjay. Excellent. So now what, what this is doing is we're asking for these instances from a container so the framework, Inject, is actually doing that for us. I'm saying, okay, you know, Senjek, I'm asking, Senjek, give me the Diagnostic Manager and give me an instance of it, and also give me the instance of the UI Manager. So this is powerful because you don't need to have to worry about calling this method directly. So now that we have that going, I need to add, I'm gonna add another thing in here, which is gonna be a serializable field. This one is gonna be a private text, and I'm gonna use this for debugging purposes. So there's gonna be a debug text and I'm just gonna make it null. Let me make sure that I bring the namespace. So this is gonna be using Unity Engine.UI. 
So this is going to be basically a text box that we use to display diagnostic information. And basically the UI manager is going to be the one responsible for sending that information to the UI. So for now, this is all we need to do here. Now let's go ahead and move into another area. And that is going to be the diagnostics manager. So in here, I don't need any of this. So we're going to get, go ahead and delete all these methods. So on this one, we're going to be doing a different type of injection. So I show you on the other one, we were using a method injection. On this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, Diagnostics Manager, I'm going to ask the Sanjay, can you give me an instance of the UI Manager? And normally, you would need to say, you know, you would need to associate this through the inspector if you wanted to do that. But with Sanjay, you can do something like this. I can say, OK, Sanjay, go ahead and inject an instance of the UI Manager which makes it a lot easier to basically for core readability. I don't need to worry about how to, how to get a UI manager. I'm basically asking for it, and I know that that is getting registered, so therefore I'm going to get an instance. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to add a new method, and this one's going to be public status. And in the public status method, I'm going to do a couple of things. This one I'm going to say debug.log, and I'm going to use a string interpolation name of setup installer and these are just some information that i want to print to the console just to make sure that we're running that we have zenja configure okay excellent and that looks good and let's do the same thing with the diagnostics manager manager we can say has been instantiated and Right here, we don't know that it has been instantiated. This is just for debugging purposes. It, it should be it should be fine for now. Now, this is the this is basically what's going to make it all work just fine. So if I say UI manager, right now we haven't implemented anything in the UI manager. So, but what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding a method so that we can display. Basically, we call the display method, and that's going to render the information to the UI. So this is going to be looking like this. We're going to say display. And then in the display, we're going to say name of setup installer is running and send J. Basically, the same thing that we added right above. Excellent. And that should be good. So right now, it won't compile, but that's OK. We'll fix it in just a minute. And let's make sure that this is lowercase. Then the other thing that I'm going to do is this is going to be using params, a string array of params. So I'm going to add a comma, and I'm going to add another another item to the string list. So I'm just going to say name of, just the same thing. So we're basically going to do this one one more time. So I'm just going to copy that. And we can, in fact, just copy the whole thing. Excellent. So and that should work. Yeah, it look, looks good. So now let's go back into the UI manager and let's go ahead and implement that method that we, we are calling. Excellent. So one that I'm going to need for sure is we're going to need to bind the debug text. So I'm going to say private text. And let me make sure debug text. And this one is going to be the one that is getting passed from the game manager. So it's going to be bringing in the using a statement and let's go ahead and add a method to bind the bind the UI. So it's gonna be text and then debug text and I'll just say this that debug text equal debug text. Excellent. So now let's actually call the create the method that is gonna do the rendering. So this is gonna be using params like I said a string array of messages and down here, we'll just say, we'll, we'll clear the debug text. We'll just set it to a string that empty to begin with. And then I'll just do a for each. And in this for each, I'm just going to say a string message. The collection is going to be the messages. Excellent. And then we'll just do debug.txt. We're basically going to be appending the message that we're getting passed. So we're just going to do a a string interpolation again message and let's go ahead and do a break okay a line return so that we don't get everything in one line all right so everything here looks fine so 
On this one, I didn't do any injection because this is the one that is actually getting injected. So there's really nothing about Zenject in here. This is just gonna be the one, the method that we call to display the messages on the UI. So that looks good. So now that we have that created, this method should now work. We're basically calling the inject instance, which was the UI manager. We'll call in the display and we're basically appending messages to the display, which then gets sent to the UI. All right, so it looks like this is good. Let's go ahead and put this one on the right so we can see everything and it's easy to see. And let's go ahead and add the UI manager and basically t uh, put it on the bottom. All right, and let's go ahead and do what I was doing originally so we can see everything basically seeing all different panels of the things that we're doing. Excellent, so now that we're doing a meta, basically we're injecting these instances into this meta. So if you remember on the UI, I had a bind UI, so we need to bind this text box, which we're gonna be basically associating through the inspector with the UI manager. So to do that, we're gonna call the bind UI. And if you notice, I have the UI manager here, so I'm just gonna say, you know, bind UI, and then just call the UI manager that bind UI and then bind the UI the debug that text that I have on the top. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the diagnostics manager now that I have the UI bind it. And I'm just gonna call this status. Excellent. So normally in, in Unity, we have to create an instance, a game object, associate the game manager, associate the diagnostics manager, and also the UI manager, and we would have multiple game objects created in the hierarchy. So by doing this, we're basically removing those constraints. All we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're letting the framework Zenje create a diagnostics manager. We're also letting the framework create a UI manager. And what's cool about this though, is I'm telling the framework, you know, I need a UI manager and the diagnostics manager. So this is gonna guarantee that I get a UI manager. So it makes the code very easy to read and also very easy to get dependencies when you need them. Okay, enough with explanations there, and I apologize if I'm going into much, into too much detail, but I'm, I'm really passionate about this subject. So now that we have all of these things created, let's go ahead and focus in Unity. Let's go ahead and add the UI pieces that we're gonna need, and, and it's actually very, very, very simple. And let me make sure that I fix everything here. It probably hasn't compiled. Yep, and it didn't compile. Looks like it's now good and clean. One thing that we need to do on the game manager, we're gonna add a component and we need to add the game manager. And if you notice, we have the debug text and we haven't set that. So let's go ahead and change a couple of things in here on this UI. Let's go ahead and make the gizmos a little smaller. And I'm gonna concentrate on the UI here for a minute. Actually, let's toggle the gizmos. So this is the example that I brought in and I don't need, I don't need most of these. All I need is, let's see, and I don't need the control status. I'm gonna need the instructions and also the label on the bottom. So the label on the bottom is gonna be the debug. So I'm just gonna name it to debug. And let's go ahead and resize it a little bit. And I'm gonna do probably something like that. Let's just snap it to the bottom. Excellent, and something like that works. Okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna remove the text here. I'm just gonna say debug log. We can center that text and also do a vertical center alignment. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Let's make it like 20. So I also change the color to something like something like that. I think I like that color. Perfect. Now on this guy, I'm gonna add instructions and resize it a little bit. I'm, I'm also going to change it to be a snap to the top. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm gonna remove all the text that we have in there. And let me go ahead and move it a little bit to the bottom. I'm gonna add the Magic Leap, Magic Leap logo here. By the way, Magic Leap is a sponsor in this video and that's why I try to put a lot of their branding so that they also get credit for what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and, okay, let me go ahead and pull some text that I need from my desktop. And this is the instructions that I, that I created. So I'm just gonna copy all these, go back into Unity, and we're just gonna paste that into here, into that text box. Okay, and looks like that's good. Excellent, so example project demonstrating how to use Inject, and then, so I'm basically providing some information so that you have it when you run it on your, on your ML device. 
And by the way, this project is going to be checked into source control. So if you didn't get a, a section of what I explained, don't worry about it because you're also going to get the video and also the source code with this. Okay, so let me see, let me resize it a, li a little bit more. And in fact, let me just move. Okay, so excellent. I think that, I think that works. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and bring in the Magic Leap logo. And I have that logo in another example. So let me just go ahead and pull all my different examples here. And I believe that one is under the Magic Leap audio spectrum. So I'm going to sort by name. And yep, that's where it is. Go to Assets and Textures. Before I pull that logo, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder under Assets. And this one's going to be called Textures. Awesome. And let's go into the Magic Leap logo. Let's go ahead and pull it down. Uh, do that one more time. There we go. So now that's the logo. And then in the logo, I'm going to change the texture type to be a Sprite. And we're going to leave everything as default. Excellent. And let's go ahead and add a new component here under the head pose canvas. And go to UI. And I'm going to add a raw image. And I'm going to follow Magic Leap standards. I'm going to say image. And this is going to be just logo. Excellent. It's going to be huge, so that's OK. We'll just go here, search for Magic Leap. There we go. And I believe we can, I can make it, where is the logo? It's huge. So now let's go ahead and make it one, one, and then we'll resize it. There we go. Uh, let's just make it a lot smaller than that. Okay, and I'm just going to put it right on the middle there, on the top. We can do 0, 0, and let me just resize it a tiny bit more. There we go, we can do, I think that looks good. Then let me just change X and go down a tiny bit more, and I'm just going to resize it. There we go, I think something, something like that works. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, and I think... All right, that looks good. Let me go ahead and go ahead and go into the debug area, and I'm gonna make the width consistent with the other one, consistent with the one on the above, which is the instructions. So I'm gonna make that one, and we can make this on 125 as well. All right, I like to have things align, and yeah, I think that looks good, and we can probably. Let's see, let's actually do 0 on X and 0 on X on this other component. All right, now I'm happy with how it looks. Excellent. And if we go into 3D, everything looks good. All right, so now one more thing that we need to do is on the game manager, we need to associate the debug the component. And remember that that's the one that is going to get sent to the UI manager, and the UI manager is then going to display the information. So I think everything is good. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn on the gizmo so we can see the gizmos again. And if everything works, we should see some information on the debug log. And let's see, we didn't see anything on the debug log, and that's that's okay. We'll figure it out why it's not working. And let me make sure that everything got set up correctly. So let me look at the let me go go back into here. I don't need the instructions anymore. Let's see. So we're calling UI manager. We're binding the debug text. Looks like that looks fine. Then we're grabbing the debug text and then so that looks fine. And here in the status we're calling. Let me make sure that we're calling a status. We are calling a status. And then a status in, is getting called and then we're displaying the information on the UI, which then calls this method. So I think that looks good. Let me see why this is not working. And let's check the game manager. I have the attribute. That looks fine. And diagnostics manager is getting created. And also this one is getting created. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity. Make sure that this is compiling. OK, let's do this one more time. If not, we'll debug it and find out why it's not working. Okay, so looks at that, didn't work. And what I'm gonna do is let's make sure that this is getting called. 
let's go ahead and debug that log and then set up is set up was call and the funny thing is this happens always during demonstrations it doesn't happen when I do it on my own <laughs> let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is getting created okay I'm getting error, an error as a hit error occur while instantiating an object of type diagnostics manager instantiation should not be used to create a mono behavior you must use the instantiate prefab component instantiate prefab component instantiate prefab okay should not be used to create mono, new mono behaviors okay let me go back and look and see what happened All right, so the issue that we have right now, it's basically we shouldn't be inheriting from mono behavior, and that's true. We shouldn't be inheriting from that. So let's remove that. And the reason for that is because this is basically the couple. The this is getting injected, and we don't really need a game object for this. It's all getting created on the game manager. So if we go to the game manager, remember that we're injecting this, so we shouldn't have to inherit from mono behavior. We're gonna be doing the same thing for the UI manager. Let's go ahead and remove the mono behavior. And in fact, we we don't need some of these classes, so let's go ahead and remove that. And we can also remove the one on Diagnostics Manager. We don't need a Unity Engine. And looks like we need it for the for the debug, so let's go ahead and put it back. So I think that should work now. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And I'm gonna clear the log. Looks like it's compiling everything. And Looks like we're good to go. So now let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. And it looks like everything is working now. So you can see that we're now getting, so let me go ahead and go into the scene view so you can see everything. So you can see that we're getting the information display and that might not look like much, but that's actually getting populated by using dependency injection. The class that is responsible for doing that is the UI manager, which got injected and then it populated the information by accessing the text so this is everything that i wanted to show you today guys if you guys have any questions let me know and also don't forget that this is in github and you can download it and look at the examples on your own time all right guys thank you very much for watching i really appreciate your time and i had a lot of fun in creating this example project for you i hope you learn a lot about dependency injection and if you have any questions please let me know. I also wanted to thank my patrons for supporting me in the channel. And specifically, I wanted to mention that Wayne Glows is being helping me quite a bit in the channel. So thank you very much, Wayne, for doing that. And also, I wanted to mention that GameDev.net is one of my sponsors. Magic Leap is also one of my sponsors. And now Oculus Star is also one of my sponsors. So thank you very much, guys.